This week, the Albuquerque City Council voted to withdraw support for a PM plan to shut down two units at the San Juan Generating Station in northwestern New Mexico. The coal fired power plant currently provides about half of the energy needed by the state's largest utility. Albuquerque was one of six entities that signed onto a PM plan that's currently being considered by the State Public Regulation Commission, and three others have already withdrawn support, citing concerns about the mix of energy that would be used to replace the units and ownership of the plant in the future. Also this week, a hearing examiner recommended that the PRC should not approve the current plan. The hearing officer suggested modifications, and we have the latest coverage from local media on our website at NewMexicoInFocus.org. Last week, our producer Sarah Gustava sat down with a representative from PNM and a leader from one of the groups that opposes the plan. I'm at the table today with Susan Sponar, a spokesperson for PNM. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having us. Also, Nellis Kennedy Howard, a senior campaign representative with the Sierra Club. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Susan, let's start with you. The plan to close down the San Juan Generating Station comes from a need to comply with federal haze regulations that have to do with national parks. And how did PNM come to the conclusion that shutting down two of these units was the better choice instead of, say, installing equipment to reduce emissions overall? There were a couple of reasons. Originally, the federal government would have required the installation of some very um, expensive pollution control equipment on all four units um, up, cost upwards of a billion dollars and it would really have had a very little environmental benefit. It would have reduced haze but not much else. It would have kept all four units at that plant running and so cost was one issue um, but the other concern, there are other concerns with power plants like San Juan. Um, last year the federal government proposed the first carbon regulations so we knew that that was coming. Ozone, coal ash, other things. So cost number one, environmental compliance number two, and environmental um, the environmental just sheer benefit, number three. The plan that we proposed means a 50% reduction in coal production up at that plant. It also means a 50% reduction in seven emissions, including carbon, uh, greenhouse gases, and then of course 50% reduction in water use. It also costs quite a bit less. We would save our customers more than half a billion dollars over 20 years. And at the same time, we also would be preserving jobs up in the Four Corners area. But the plant together with the mine, with the mine up there that supports it is a major employer. And we're not only talking full-time jobs, the people who work at the mine and the plant, but um, the way coal-powered plants work is periodically you shut down a unit and when you do that, you perform all kinds of improvements in repairs all at one time, kind of when the hood is open. Well, that brings in hundreds and hundreds of workers with very specialized skills to that area. And of course, they eat there, they sleep there, they're, they're buying things there. So the, the plant and the mine together have a big um, impact on the economy of the region. A two unit shutdown will have an impact, unfortunately, but it, it's not the same as a four unit shutdown. We'll get into some more of those details in just a moment. Nellis, the PNM plan calls for shutting down these two units, making up that power with a mix of solar, nuclear power, and natural gas. Does the Sierra Club think that's a good solution? You know, I think that we recognize that shutting down two of the units of the four is a great step in the right direction, but unfortunately to do just that seems to miss a great opportunity at San Juan Generating Station, which is to put the, pl to put the plant on a path where it's transitioning from coal power to cleaner sources of energy like wind and solar, which are so abundant in the state. And there's a way to do that that would preserve jobs while protecting New Mexico's health, New Mexico's skies, and things that are important to New Mexico, including water consumption. So we believe that it's a good step in the right direction, but it's missing out on a huge opportunity. And what are you hearing from community members in the region? Well, you know, I, I think that um, th that's a really good question, and I think it's an important one in the sense that we really hope that PNM can put together a plan that creates a clean energy future for the region that will build new jobs in Farmington area um, and protect the protect New Mexico's health in the process while doing that. And to, and fortunately, what PNM is doing instead is putting forward a plan that's just going to continue the burning of coal at a 40-year-old coal plant and continue to throw ratepayer dollars at this aging coal plant when every dollar that's spent there could be going towards renewable energy, energy efficiency, wind and solar, uh, and creating jobs that wouldn't otherwise exist. 
Susan, did PNM consider having more solar as part of the mix, more alternative energy, putting more of the money towards that? Yeah, no, the, um, we did. What we we used a very sophisticated modeling um, kind of software that's a standard in the industry. We looked at thousands, literally thousands of different options. And the, the option that we chose includes 40 megawatts of solar, which is kind of a first to replace coal with solar energy, and I think speaks to um, both a drop in cost for solar and an improvement in efficiency, and that's a good thing. We're looking at um, another 177 megawatts of gas, and this is a peaking plant, meaning a plant that, not a plant that runs all the time, but a plant that we can bring into service when we need it. And the other thing that we're looking at is bringing into uh, serving our customers 134 megawatts of existing nuclear. Now this is from a, a nuclear energy plant in Arizona. We we're already using some of that plant to serve customers. There are a couple of benefits of that, and um, I know there are environmental concerns about nuclear. But a benefit about nuclear is that it has absolutely no emissions, particularly carbon emissions. So, and and um, we are going to be able to use it to serve our customers very cost effectively, well below market price. The, and then, of course, the other thing we're looking at, and it, it's part of um, our ability to kind of make the plan work, and that is we'll take for a nominal fee, really, 132 megawatts from Unit 4 that is now not serving PNM customers. And so number one is cost. Number two, well really number one is reliability. When we look at a power supply plan, we have to look at no matter what, even if we have other units that go offline, will you have electricity 24-7? Um, both uh, we're, and but outside of our replacement plan, and I think it's important to remember this, we're doing a lot more with renewable energy. So that's not, that 40 megawatts of solar is not the only um, renewable energy we have or will add in, to our power supply. Just January the 1st, we've taken more wind. But uh, coal is a baseload resource. It means it runs all the time. We can turn it on and off if we need to do that, although typically you don't. And it's very difficult to replace that kind of a resource with a resource that isn't, doesn't have the same characteristics. So there's some you know, trade-offs in power supply planning. There were six organizations that signed on to the original plan that's before the PRC, but three of those have withdrawn from the agreement. Does that signal to PNM that maybe this plan is not going to work, that you need to go back to the drawing board again and talk about the details? We think that we've put the best plan um, for this particular power plant before the PRC right now. It, it is the most cost effective. We can count on a reliable power supply today and it's we think it's a very balanced approach. It's, it's the right thing to do today. I think, uh, you know, again, we have to look at this isn't the only thing that we're doing today with renewable energy and as we look to the future, this isn't the last thing we're going to do. We think today the this is the right step to take. And um, I, we haven't seen any plan that was more cost effective or provided a more balanced uh, portfolio for our customers. But, you know, again, it's not the last thing we're going to do. Now, has the Sierra Club had some, some plans or some suggestions that you'd like to see in place that you're talking to your members about? Well, you know, it's really up to PNM on whether or not they want to take advantage of this opportunity and put us on a path for clean energy. I know that um, PNM says that the plan is really cost effective, reliable. The, the, that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. The, the, the honest truth is, let's be clear, it's expensive, it's dangerous, it's unreliable. The coal plant, for instance, the, uh, PNM isn't sure who will actually own the coal plant after 2022. That's an unsettled matter. Um, also, PNM doesn't know where they're going to be getting the coal after 2017. They don't know where they're going to be getting it, and they don't know how much they're going to be paying for it. So the plan itself is unreliable, it's risky, and it's asking ratepayers to bear the brunt of those decisions, those poor or energy choices that they're making. And so we, of course, want the commission to reject PM's plan and instead direct PM to look at cleaner sources of energy. Is Susan PM's response to those concerns? Um, well, I think uh, there it is true. We have nine owners at the plant um, today. They all have a responsibility uh, for. Um, 
bringing a, a change in the you know in the in their ownership to an end. We've been in negotiations with the owners. Those those negotiations are ongoing, and and we're very close to resolving uh, essentially who's going to own the plant after we shut down those two units. As to the and, and the same thing for the the future of the coal supply. We've had different um, suppliers over the years. Uh, our we're still in negotiations. I think we're very close to a resolution to that. And you know our focus has been um, to find the most cost effective option for our customers. And that doesn't change. So I think those two issues will be resolved. Uh, we know there are concerns about that. But we are, I think we're confident that we'll resolve them. Again, I think, you know, because we take, what we're looking at is what's the right thing to do today? And not only in terms of cost, but for our customers providing a more balanced power supply. In fact, we'll reduce the coal in our portfolio um, by about 30%. We will increase the solar. It's not the only thing that we're ever going to do. I think, um, I think some people have looked at this plan and said, okay, this is where we stop. You know, this is the change that we make. This is where we're gonna stop nothing will change for another generation and I don't think that's the case but I think if we make I think if we make the right decisions today then we we have a poor you know a good foundation for adopting um, new options as we go along we have a we have a every three years we do a very in-depth power supply analysis and one of the things that we've noticed is so the last time we did it was in 2011 and the cost of solar was more than twice what it is today well since that time, the cost of solar panels, PV panels, has dropped significantly. The other thing that we're following, and I think will give us more options in the future, is what's happening with battery storage. And today, for us, it's 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 not going to replace a coal power, a coal plant. But in three years, will that be the same? We don't know that. Um, P and M has uh, taken a leading role in working with that. Um, with that uh, possibility. And of course, what power supply does is it takes an intermittent resource like solar or wind, and it gives you the option to turn it on and turn it off when you need it. And that's, you know, that's the challenge. Um, it also helps you, so the grid that we have today is a fairly old fashioned. Um, it's designed for one way, steady power flows. Well, with, um, with battery storage, I think the question that we're really looking at is what, you know, how do you safely integrate a lot of, of renewable energy, and we think that is what will happen in the future. Renewable is not only intermittent, it's not steady when it does run. And so p and is sort of helping to push that envelope. So I think in the years to come, we'll have more alternatives than we do today. I understand cost. We hear that a lot. Um, we hear the, the need to balance that. But you know, Georgetown, Texas just announced they're going to go to all alternative energy by 2017. Doesn't p and a utility, or some municipalities just kind of need to go big and take that risk in order to really make things happen? Well, uh, there are a couple of thoughts. The question number one is what renewable energy you have at your disposal. Wind and solar intermittent, um, solar doesn't work, solar PV does not work at night, and even solar thermal is not a 24-7 resource. But their hydro is, for example, and I, I guess the question is, would New Mexico have that option? Geothermal has some potential as well and P&M is the the first large utility of its type in this state to um, take advantage of um, geothermal energy and we have some potential there is a, a plant that um, opened about a year or so ago in the southern part of the state we're the only customer and it's still in startup phase we'll see where that goes so it depends on where the technology goes a consideration for us here right now is that about 20 percent of our customers live at the poverty line or below it and so incremental costs can make a big difference for those customers and uh, you know the other issue is that in this state we're still struggling with um, to recover economically so we have to look at where our businesses are um, at the same time that doesn't mean nothing and it means we can still progress. Nels want to hear from you a little bit more what do you think about that idea of, of utilities and municipalities kind of going big and, and, and taking a risk on alternative energy right now, even though it's still more expensive than 
coal power? It's not a risk. It really isn't. It's cost effective. It's reliable. It's affordable. What is risky is putting all of your eggs in one basket, investing millions of ratepayer dollars into a 40-year-old aging coal plant that they hope to run, you know, indefinitely. There's no end in sight. And in doing so, they're just going to lock New Mexico ratepayers into dirtying New Mexico skies, waters, and everything into the into the distant future, into the not so distant future, I guess. Um, you know, P&M's plan it, it really is expensive. The costs of PNM's plan have escalated by over one billion dollars in the last year. That's a billion with a B. That's a lot of money. And as Susan mentioned, this is a is an unfortunately, um, you know, New Mexico is a second has the second highest poverty rate in the country. And those are costs that ratepayers shouldn't have to bear with an expensive plan that continues to burn coal where they don't know where they're going to be getting it. Um, how much they're going to be paying for it. I mean, look at the city of Farmington, for instance. The city of Farmington is home of the plant. Home of the plant who has said, we are not going to acquire a further interest in San Juan Generating Station because of reliability issues. This is home city of the plant, saying because of reliability issues that are going to be pos passed on to ratepayers, the costs. It's, it, coal is really the gamble in this. It's not the clean energy and energy efficiency, renewable energy, those jobs that could be brought to New Mexico. What does the Sierra Club want to see instead? Absolutely clean energy. This is an opportunity. To miss out on this opportunity would be a real waste. And, and by throwing more money at a 40-year-old coal plant is just a bad idea that really is going to lock New Mexico ratepayers into burning coal into the future. I know that um, PNM has said that this is not the last thing that they're going to do on renewable energy. But by investing this much money into a 40-year-old coal plant is really locking ratepayers into coal for, uh, for the future, which is something that ratepayers shouldn't have to bear. So we believe that clean energy Energy is an opportunity that this is an opportunity to invest in clean energy make the right decision for the Commission to look at PNM and say you know what this billion dollar plan that you've put forward it's just too risky for our ratepayers and instead we're going to reject your plan and we're going to direct you to look at cleaner sources of energy like wind and solar can you define opportunity for us Absolutely. So right now, as I mentioned, um, the coal plant, they don't know who is going to own the coal plant after 2022. They don't know where they're going to be getting their coal after 2017, and they don't know how much they're going to be paying for that coal after 2017. Instead of taking a gamble on coal, maybe those are dates that they could look at transitioning to clean our sources of energy. Those are dates off into the future where we could be building out a plan to develop clean energy in order to replace the power coming from San Juan Generating Station, rather investing millions of ratepayers' dollars into this 40-year-old technology, it's like a car. For instance, are you going to buy a 40-year-old car and continue to try to upgrade it, or are you going to invest in the future and essentially the 21st century, which is what we're in now today? So clean energy is the way to go. We're going to have to leave it right there. We will pick up this issue again in the future. I want to thank you both for coming in today. We'll be updating our viewers on the PRC hearings and, and public comment on our website, NewMexicoInFocus.org. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.